Hey guys, welcome to another video. My name is Ian, I'm Ian the Reader, and today I have a really fun video for you. At least I think it's fun. So, I have made an original book tag. I've seen so many book tags on BookTube and I love them and I think they're just so much fun to make, so much fun to watch, and I had an idea for one and I was like, you know what, let's go ahead and make this. So. This is the Blockbuster book tag. So there may be a video or tag similar to this. I tried finding one on BookTube because I just wanted to make this kind of video and I couldn't find one. So if there's one out there, please let me know in the comments because I would love to watch that slash give, I mean, I guess I don't have to give credit because I'm sure my questions are gonna be different than whoever else's tag there is out there if there is one, but I would love to see more content like this, so let me know. But anyway, this is the Blockbuster book tag. In this tag, I have chosen 15 of the biggest blockbuster movie or franchises in existence. And from those, I have come up with questions based on each type of blockbuster movie or franchise. So first, a few disclaimers. One, I'm not gonna talk about and make questions for every single popular movie or franchise out there because that would make this the longest video in history. My original draft of this had, I think, 21 prompts or topics or questions or whatever you wanna call them. And that just felt too long. So I did narrow this down to 15 questions in the tag. However, I did include the other six in the description down below. So if you are tagged in this and you wanna make this video, or if you're not tagged and you just wanna make this video, I'm, I'm officially tagging everybody out there. If you wanna make this tag, go for it, because I think it's fun. But if you wanna make this tag, you can either do the original 15 questions or you can add on these six bonus questions as well. Totally up to you. So for each movie or franchise, I have come up with a question or a type of book to compare it to, and those will be listed as we go, and we're just gonna go for it. So here is the Blockbuster book tag. Hope you enjoy. Challenge number one is Back to the Future. Name a book with multiple timelines. So Back to the Future is one of my all-time favorite trilogies. It's so good. All three of them just bring so much to the table. And so I had to pick a book that I really felt was impacted by the multiple timelines that are going on with it. And for this one, I decided to go ahead and go with Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. This is an incredible book. This author is really popular for her book, Little Fires Everywhere, and I enjoyed that book, but Everything I Never Told You was a five star for me. At the start of the book, you find out that, I believe her name is Lydia, is dead. She is the daughter in this family and she has died under mysterious circumstances, nobody really knows what happened. You get two timelines in this book. You get directly after her death and the days that happen after it, and you get before she died when she was alive, just kind of analyzing the family and things like that. This is such a powerful story about family and about the expectations that you know are placed on children by their parents and the way that parents have to be like these idols for people like for their children and things like that um, it just really analyzes the different roles of a family and how those roles are changed when one of the members of the family is lost and uh yeah this is just such a powerful read and i thought the two timelines were really impactful because you know at the very beginning that she has died but they don't know that in the past timeline. So you're seeing all these things happen in the family, them come across strife and arguing and things like that. And your heart just hurts because you know what's gonna happen. And uh, yeah, this is just an incredible book that greatly benefited from the multiple timelines. I think it's a great fit for this one. Challenge number two is The Lord of the Rings. Name a book with one of your favorite fellowships or group of friends. So I suppose for this one, you could pick The Fellowship of the Ring and The Lord of the Rings because it's based on a book. However, that feels like cheating. So I decided to go ahead and pick Lonesome Dove by Larry McMurtry. This book is incredible. It's not a book that I would normally pick up. It's a Western, but it's a very renowned Western. It won the Pulitzer Prize and everything. And this book follows a group of men traveling from Texas up north, can't remember what state, on a cattle drive. And that's the whole plot in a very vague sense. It's really about the characters and all of their development and everything going on with them. And um, this book is incredible. It was so addicting. Like when I wasn't reading this book, I was thinking about this book, but the characters really are what make this book. You find out so much about this group of men and the surrounding characters that they meet that you feel like you know them. I think in my review I put for this, I wish that I knew people in real life as well as I know the characters in this book. And that is so true. They really, you know, they're their own people and they stand on their own as characters, but the way they interact with each other, the way they know and treat each other, just really creates such an interesting and amazing experience in reading this book. I highly recommend it. I know it's a chunker. I know it's a genre that a lot of people don't read, but trust me, Lonesome Dove is incredible. 
Challenge number three is Shrek. Name a book or series that ended up being a lot better than it first appeared to be. So with this one, I have a pretty obvious choice for me personally, and that is the Dresden Files. So when I started the series, I thought it was okay for book one, and then book two and three came along and I was like, uh, I don't know if this is a series for me, but I was so wrong. I was encouraged to push through and keep reading, and I'm so glad I did because this really is my favorite fantasy series to read and talk about and reread. I love The Dresden Files. It's such a fun series. It's one that, you know, on the surface level, it's very basic and very shallow. But the more you get into it, the more you learn about these characters and it becomes an incredible character study of Harry Dresden and the surrounding characters. And then in addition to that, it's just so huge in scope. Like it starts out as this wizard detective in Chicago and it ends up being this like epic fantasy and it's so incredible. And it was so much better than I thought it was going to be after reading the first few books. Dresden Files is definitely a Shrek, for sure. Challenge number four is Titanic. So with this one, I have two options. You can either choose your favorite romance in a book or a book that is super dang sad. You don't have to say super dang sad, just like, you know, a tragic book or whatever. But for me, this book is Together We Will Go by J. Michael Straczynski. I think that's his name. I don't remember. I'll put the book up here, but this book messed me up. So this book is a huge trigger warning for a lot of things, but it basically follows a group of people who have decided that they no longer want to live. And so they get together and they get on a bus and they start driving across the country on one last road trip. And at the end of the road trip, they're going to drive the bus off a cliff. And it is emotional and powerful, hilarious at times, but just unforgettable. Like this book really left a mark on me. And I'm not gonna spoil anything that happens, but just the whole journey, you find out about each character and why they've gotten to this point in their lives, and it's just crushing. It really, really is. Um, this book is so well executed, so powerful, and I wish that more people were talking about it because it's amazing. And yeah, it was super sad. It was super dang sad, so it's definitely a Titanic of a book. Challenge number five is E.T. Name a book with one of your favorite non-human characters. So this was kind of hard because there are two characters in the same series or set of series that I wanted to go with and I really fought hard. I almost went with Night Eyes from the Farseer trilogy slash the Realm of the Otherlings books, but I had to go with Paragon from the Live Ship Traders and the Realm of the Otherlings books. He is this ship right here. So he's sort of human, but actually not human at all. So he is a ship and he is alive. And um, his character for this series was honestly one of my favorite aspects of the Lives of Traders trilogy. He added so much. He was such a mysterious character. There was so much history to him that you didn't really understand or know about. And you were always kind of like on edge when you were around his character or when you were reading him. But there's so much depth to him as a character. I loved finding out more about his story throughout the Live Ship Traders trilogy, and he just really made this trilogy what it was for me. So yeah, Paragon is my favorite non-human character. Challenge number six is Harry Potter. Name a book or series that gives you nostalgia. So again, for this one, you could in theory say Harry Potter, because for a lot of people that is the series. So if you wanna say Harry Potter, you do you, that's awesome. But for me, my Harry Potter was a series of unfortunate events by Lemony Snicket. This was the first book series that I got hooked on. I read it with my aunt when I was growing up and it just like blew my mind because it was so different than anything I've ever read because it kind of like breaks the fourth wall a little bit because the narrator talks to you, the reader. So that was the first time I'd experienced that. It was full of a lot of misfortune, obviously, because it's a series of unfortunate events. And the three main characters were just so unique as well as Count Olaf. He just was such a fascinating antagonist. My little mind was blown by this series. I loved it so much. And when I read it, I felt smarter because of the words they use and just how creative the kids are. And I just get so much nostalgia about this series. It was definitely like a big part of my childhood. Childhood. I definitely want to reread those and for me Lemony Snicket and A Series of Unfortunate Events are my Harry Potter. Challenge number seven is Avatar. Not The Last Airbender but Avatar by James Cameron. Name a book or series with an incredibly immersive setting. For this one there's a really obvious choice for me. Yeah fantasy worlds that are more traditional are obviously very immersive but a setting and atmosphere that was just unparalleled for me was in Piranesi by Susanna Clarke. So this story follows a man named Piranesi or that's not actually his name, he says, but that's what people call him. And he lives in the house, as he calls it. It is a giant labyrinth-like mansion that has statues all over it. And there are tons of floors and each floor has its own type of statues and, and things like that. And there's an ocean that lives in the house and it rises and falls throughout the days. And like that setting alone, just reading about that was so incredible. And the whole story takes place inside of this mansion labyrinth place and it was so immersive. It was unlike anything I'd ever read. I was in awe 
of the setting of this book. The characters and the writing obviously were really good in the mystery behind what's going on in this story, but the setting really made this book what it is for me. This is definitely an Avatar-like experience. I would love to see this on film. I think it'd be incredible. Challenge number eight is name a book or series that is intended for younger audiences, quote unquote, but that you enjoy. For me, I had a couple options for this one, but I decided to go with Keeper of the Lost Cities by Shannon Messenger. I am really enjoying this series and it's one that I wanna get into more because I read the first three books like back to back to back at the very end of 2020 and I didn't read any in 2021, but I am very eager to get back into these so they are on my mind. This is one of those series that follows a young character. Her name is Sophie Foster and at the start of the series, she feels like she's a normal person, except she's not normal actually, I'm lying. She can read people's thoughts. So she feels very isolated. She has this ability to read people's minds. She doesn't want to, but she can't help it. and. Um, uh, she thinks she's alone in it, but then she discovers she's not alone and that there's a school for people just like her and it goes from there. And I really have enjoyed this. It's like a middle grade, obviously, but there are so many books. I think there's like eight or nine so far and it's ongoing and uh, it's just a lot of fun. It really is. So if you're looking for a lighthearted middle grade series that is great for older audiences as well as younger audiences, I think Keeper of the Lost Cities is a really great choice. Challenge number nine is James Bond. Name a book or series that rests upon the shoulders of its protagonist. So for this one, I had a couple options, but I did decide to go with The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien because it's The Hobbit. It's about The Hobbit, so obviously, Bilbo Baggins makes this book what it is. If Bilbo Baggins was removed from this, it would not be The Hobbit, obviously. It'd be the dwarves and a wizard or something like that. But yeah, uh, for me, The Hobbit definitely is made by Bilbo Baggins. He's such an iconic character, and I love that he's in The Lord of the Rings as well, but I love also that he gets a whole story just for him, and he truly just brings this series to life. I do love the dwarves as well, and obviously Gandalf, but Bilbo Baggins is such an iconic character. The Lord of the Rings would not be the same without him, but The Hobbit especially is made by Bilbo Baggins. He's definitely a James Bond-like protagonist in that way. Challenge number 10 is Star Wars. Name your favorite multi-generational story. Don't be surprised, you guys. You knew this series was gonna make an appearance in this video. That is The Green Bone Saga by Fonda Lee. So technically this book primarily, or this series primarily follows one generation of this family, but there is also overlap in that you get the older gener generation and the way they've impacted the current generation and then as the book progresses this book covers 20 years and so you get the younger generation arising as well and that really plays in to the book and to the themes of the story just the family and the generations of the family and all that jazz but yeah i love these characters so much and their whole family i love the call family they are absolutely incredible my favorite of the generation that we follow is probably shay i think she's such an interesting character but as the younger generation rises up i really love them as well and then the looming presence of the older generation is such a heavy aspect of the book. I think that the multi-generational aspect of this story is really one of its best qualities. The next challenge is the Rocky franchise. Name a book or series with an underdog as a main character. So I really wanted to go with Fitz from the Realm of the Elderling series for this challenge, but like I only wanna use each book or series one time for one challenge. So instead, I have a good second option. I think I think that this is pretty accurate and that he's an underdog, and that is Hadrian Marlowe from Empire of Silence. So this is a sci-fi epic series that follows Hadrian Marlowe, who is a part of this very prestigious family, but he is the eldest, so he should be the one who inherits all the powers and the responsibility of his father's position, but he's really looked down upon. He's not seen as being taken seriously by any means. He's even like shorter than his younger brother and things like that, which plays into it. He's just not respected at all. And so he's very much written off by his society, by his family and things like that. And it's really about him kind of coming into his own journey and the things that happen to him. And he just becomes such a powerful presence, not only in his life, I guess, or like in his surroundings, but also in his society and in culture and things like that. And the things he does are hugely impactful. So I feel like he's definitely an underdog that really shows up in his story. Challenge number 12 is Mission Impossible. Name a book or series with one of your favorite heists. So this one isn't necessarily like a heist per se, and then they're not trying to steal anything, but Red Rising has one of the most impossible missions that I have ever read in a book or series. So. In this book and in this series, Darrow is a red, which is seen as the lowest end of his society's culture, which is based off of like a color thing where there's reds and golds and browns and blues and whites and yada, yada, yada. There's a lot of them, but he's a red. He's basically a slave. And with this, he 
wants revenge for something that happens early on in book one. And so he goes on this mission basically to become a gold, to go undercover as a gold. He has to go through a lot of a transformation, a huge transformation to become a gold, but he tries to enter their society to overthrow the whole system. And this book was incredible. I love the whole process of him really getting into his mission and everything that happened after that and going undercover. I thought it was brilliant. I love this series so much. I've read the first three books and I'm dying to continue with Iron Gold and Dark Age. So we'll definitely be doing that soon. But this is an impossible mission if I've ever heard of one. Challenge number 13 is Pirates of the Caribbean. Name a book or series with some shady character or characters that you can't help but love. So for this one, I had a few options as well, but I decided to go with Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby. So this book I read back in 2021 near the end in December and I loved it so much. It was in like my top six, I think, of 2021. What this book is about, it's about two men who are ex-cons. They both have sons and their sons were married at the beginning of the book but they are, their sons are murdered and the police aren't really doing anything about it and these ex-con dads decide to come together to take care of business and figure out who killed their sons and get revenge and all that. And it was a wild story. And it was one of those where like, you find out a lot about the dad's relationship with their sons and just kind of all the history behind that and the things that they wish they'd done differently. And so you really feel for them as they are doing some really messed up things. These characters are definitely shady as heck, but you can't help but feel for them and want them to find some sort of peace, some sort of happiness, yeah. But they're shady, they're real shady. Challenge number 14 is Fast and the Furious. Name a book or series with a super fast paced plot. So for me, I, I decided, there are so many I could go with for this one, but the one that's on my mind is The Traitor's Blade by Sebastian de Castell, the first book in the Great Coat series. I just read this book in January. And it was so much fun. I was kind of in a almost reading slump in that I picked up two or three books that I tried to get into and they just were not doing it for me. They were huge letdowns. And I randomly was just like, you know what? Let's just read The Traitor's Blade. Let's give it a go. Let's just listen to the first bit I said. And it hooked me like immediately. Sebastian de Castell does such a good job with his introduction to the series. He writes in such a way that it really draws you in and it makes you feel like the reader or like the main character is talking to the reader like specifically and you're just like yeah i'm with you i'm with you and then the plot just takes off and it's like non-stop from there so much happens in this book even though it's only like i listened to it on audiobooks it was only like 12 hours long but it was so fast paced so much was crammed into it and the pacing was just excellent it was such a good book i'm so excited to continue this was definitely a very fast and very furious book the quality of this book was much better than the fast and the furious movies in my personal opinion but the plot was i mean the pacing was about the same and challenge number 15, the final challenge is MCU slash DCEU. Name a book or series with a huge payoff. So with this challenge, I feel like you have to go with a fantasy series because, you know, in superheroes, they have like magic powers almost. You gotta go with a fantasy. But with this one, I felt like there was a really obvious choice and that is The Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson, which is funny because we haven't seen the last book in the Stormlight Archives by far. Even in the first arc of it, there's five books and he's only released four so far. I haven't even read the fourth book yet. So I've only read the first three of the Stormlight Archive. However, there's so much buildup in each book that by the time you get to the end, you're just like, Yes, this is everything this book has been leading up towards. The payoff is incredible. Especially with the second book, Words of Radiance, the payoff was huge. There was this one like superhero landing moment that just like, oh, I was so excited when I read it. The third book had a really good payoff too in the first one, but the payoff for Words of Radiance was like, oh, so good. I loved it so much. And I definitely want to read the fourth book as soon as I can. It's just so big, but I'll get around to Rhythm of War at some point, so yeah. But anyway, that is the Blockbuster Book Challenge. I had so much fun coming up with these challenges and these prompts and uh, making the video as well as like trying to decide what books I wanted to fit into each one. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. I'm gonna go ahead and tag a couple people uh, just because I know none of you have done this because I, I made it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and tag Andrew from Andrew's Wizardly Reads. I'm gonna go ahead and tag Bryce from Shelf Centered. I'm gonna go ahead and tag Fina from Fina Reads. Uh, Pete from The Ponderings of Pete. Leslie from The Nerdy Narrative. And one more, one more. I'll go ahead and tag Grace Dion. Um, yeah, so those are 
the people I'm gonna tag. But like I said, if you're watching this video and you wanna make this, feel free to. I love movies and I love books, so it was really fun getting to blend two of my favorite things. And like I said, there are 21 challenges that I made in total, so if you wanna go ahead and do all of them, feel free to, or just do the first 15 like I did. But thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed this book tag. I had so much fun doing an original tag and talking about some of my favorite books and my favorite movies and things like that. It was just a lot of fun. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell because I do post videos every Tuesday and every Friday and some other days as well if I feel like it and I have the time. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.